And finally, as you are no doubt aware, our exam results have been a bit of a disappointment. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand you over to Mr. Slat, who I'm sure has something terribly interesting to say about this very difficult and delicate subject. Contraception. <laughs> yes? Contraception. More in Bolivar to the sixth floor. Uh, on your feet, let everyone get a good look at you. It doesn't take much, you know. Contraception. A little thought. A little planning. But some of us don't bother, do we, Maureen? <laughs> and then what happens? This poor, lonely, backward and, let's be honest, rather desperate girl... <laughs> ...gets born. And 15 years later, here she is failing all her exams and dragging us to the bottom of the league table. <laughs> Pupils whose single parent families are responsible for a 6% drag factor on this school's academic performance. Oh, look at the poor bewildered child. Wasn't she worth a trip to the chemist? <laughs> However, let me be clear. This doesn't mean that I think Maureen or any other planning error like her is unworthy. In fact, I'm delighted to be able to inform you that Maureen will be raising money for the school fund by doing a bungee jump from a crane in the town centre this Friday. <laughs> Should she be inclined to volunteer? A bit of a tradition for whoever's got the worst exam results, obviously. I'm afraid of heights, sir. Oh, don't worry. You won't be up there for long. <laughs> and, of course, we take every precaution. Unlike your parents. <laughs> Robert Jones at the second floor. Nice, nice man, Robert. Robert. Good, Good results. results. Splendid. An example to everyone. And I understand you've got a couple of younger brothers doing very well at primary school. Is that right? So, uh... Are your parents planning any more? <laughs> Are they, you know, still trying? Uh, not that I'm suggesting you actively encourage them, of course. <laughs> Don't want you to start cheering them on or applauding or anything. <laughs> that, that would be horrible. Just, you know, suggest an early night now and then. <laughs> Have a bottle of wine. On me. Anyway, I expect I'll be seeing them this evening at the parents' night, and I'll be sure to tell them to keep it up. <laughs> it... Sorry, there seems to be a problem with my marriage. <laughs> my microphone. Not my... with my microphone. My marriage is fine. <laughs> Absolutely. No problems there. Eric. Well, some problems, obviously. <laughs> well, one problem. But, um, we're getting help. Uh, we're really getting somewhere. Eric, please. Right, Miss Tripley. Perhaps we could go straight to the closing song. Right, everyone. Onwards and upwards. <laughs> Are you taking the piss? <laughs> Listen a moment. Right. Here we all are, then. Now, as you know, this parents' evening follows immediately after our rather poor showing in the league tables. As you talk to the parents, I think it's very important that you make them understand that you appreciate the gravity of the situation. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree entirely, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Slat. Let them know Mr. Kennedy and I are on your cases. Well, yes. Show them you know your asses are on the line. <laughs> asses? 
glasses. On the line, yes. <laughs> they're bottoms. <laughs> they're unsafe. Really? Well, I don't mean their bottoms are hazardous in themselves. Don't tell the parents that. That would be awful. Quite. What I mean is, no bottom in this school is safe from Mr. Kennedy and I. <laughs> Are you quite all right? Yes, I'm fine, fine. No more microphone trouble, then? <laughs> yes, thank you, dear. Very uh, amusing. <laughs> well, I don't think I can really add to Mr. Slat's highly illuminating remarks, so uh, good luck, everyone. Carry on. Susie, there's someone coming tonight. David Miller, one of the parents. He'll be looking for me. And uh, it might be best if he didn't bump into Eric. Well, if I find him, I'll do my best. Sounds interesting. Oh, it is, believe me. <clears throat> Miss Travis, sir, uh, you take Henry Wellington for English, don't you? Well, how would you describe his parents? Well, going strictly by Henry, brother and sister. <laughs> Apparently, they're coming in to complain about some passing remark I made on his school report. Well, honestly, dear, I told you not to put expendable. <laughs> this is a teaching staff conversation, Janet. I wouldn't expect you to understand. So, darling, we're really going to have to do something about your microphone trouble, aren't we? What? Because at the moment it needs a lot of amplification. Oh, yes, dear, that, uh, that will be all. Quite honestly, I've taken to using my personal stereo. Janet! <laughs> she's, uh, she's such a kidder. Come on. I think you better go and have a chat with her before she starts kidding around with someone else. Evening, Mr. Slat. Hi, Susie. Hi, Dan. Great. <laughs> I just said hi. It's not great. It's just okay. You don't have to say great every time I acknowledge your existence. All right. Terrific. Miss <laughs> Travis. Are you intending to wear those clothes this evening? No. No, I thought I might meet the parents naked with a provocatively shaped vegetable. <laughs> that is, if Dan happens to be available. Sorry? Nothing. Just being suddenly and unforgivably insulting to you. Fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Cardale! Dan, for both our sakes, could you cut out the lovesick puppy thing? And doesn't my calling you a vegetable give you any kind of a hint? Provocatively shaped. Hi, Jason. Hi, Susie. Great. Damn. Sorry. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Beg your pardon. So, oh, what are those? Oh, nothing. Fantastic. Box. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, you know, just fantastic bollocks. <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> Fantastic. I fall out the plane, I pull the ripcord, I get a sleeping bag and some cooking utensils. You are right? Yeah, yeah, nothing. I lie down and an overdose won't fix. Miss! What are you two doing here? Shouldn't you be at home? Oh, we're staying late, miss, to help show the parents around. Mr. Kennedy asked us. All right. Uh, is it true, miss, what Mr. McGill says? Mr. McGill? Uh, about Mr. Cockfoster. So tell me what Mr. McGill says. Probably, you know, a cucumber or something. <laughs> oh, oh, Janet, are the refreshments ready for the parents? Sorry, darling, could you just speak up? Can't they make you out? Yes, thank you, dear. Very amusing. Oh, dear, it's no projection. <laughs> Dan, heel! Heel. No, never mind. <laughs> But why? So tell me. What? Well, they won't tell me, so you're going to. Well, who won't tell you what? You have been spreading rumours about Jace, about Mr. Cockfoster. Now, the kids won't tell me what exactly, so I'm asking you. Well, why would I spread rumours about Mr. Cockfoster? Because, Dan, any time any guy on this staff comes within ten feet of me, you tell the kids he's got plastic genitals. <laughs> or that he's a serial cannibal sex killer on community service. Well, yes. Uh, half the first form still think the head of the French department has a gerbil in him. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I was so, only... the question is, what have you said about Mr. Cockfoster? Nothing. Really. 
<laughs> Nothing really. I may have hinted, you know, in a sort of light way, in a sort of full chums together, joke amongst the teacher pals way, I may have sort of mentioned in passing that, that, that he's Satan. Satan? Yeah, you know, the devil. Yes, Dan, I, I know which Satan we're talking about. So, you have told the kids that the man entrusted with their religious instruction is, in fact, the devil. Well, the devil's in religion. Where's Slats? I want to speak to Slats. Um, who's your nice friend, Maureen? He's my big brother, Malcolm. Where's Slats? Because he's got a big problem. And I'm it. Big problem, yes, I see. Um, what exactly is that? That's a bungee rope. <laughs> right, come along, everyone. They'll be here in a minute, so get to your rooms and ready yourselves for the parent interface. <laughs> so, uh, all right? I'm fine, dear. I'm not the one with the problem. <laughs> I don't have a problem. I have a slight temporary hitch of an entirely trivial nature, which I wish you'd stop making so many amusing remarks about. Oh, I'm just trying to see the funny side. You did have a sense of humour once, didn't you? I seem to recall you used to make me laugh. Yes, dear. But I was never joking. <laughs> yes, of course. That's where it all went wrong. The point is... The point is you have a problem, and it's time you accepted that. I don't have a problem. I'm fine. Eric, you have a problem. I'm tip-top. I'm 100%. Problem. I'm fine. I'm tip-top. I'm raring to go. I'm absolutely 100% okay. Mr. Slack, you've got a big problem downstairs. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You, you, you meant downstairs? Uh, uh, well, now do you see what you've done? Are you satisfied? I've killed a religious education teacher. <laughs> Why isn't there anyone to deal with this? Why... Why is it always left to me? I, um... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And this is the main office, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Galfast High. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm tip-top. Nothing wrong with me, I can assure you of that. It's just the school. Not that this isn't a good school, obviously. It's just that, um... Sometimes you just need a little cry, that's all. But, uh, what's wrong with him? Oh, uh, uh, he, he fainted. Fainted? <laughs> yes, yes, fainted. But again, I'd hate you to get the impression we're not coping here. So, anyway, if you'd like to make your way to the staff room where there are refreshments available... He's bleeding. I think he's been punched. Punch? Possibly. Possibly? Well, it's a parent's night. There are bound to be casualties. <laughs> Could you all please move along to the staff room before there are any more accidents? Well, we can't just... Now, off you go now. Much safer in there. Lots of tea and biscuits. Well... If you wouldn't mind joining the others in the staff room, please, I can deal with this. Did you punch me? No. No. You, you just sort of fell and hit your head. It's... Is that what happened? Didn't you? Well, I suppose I must have. Now, are you ill? No, no, it's probably just this school it gets to you sometimes. <laughs> Though, once more, I hope we're not making a bad impression. I'm just going to get some water. Yes, good idea. Excuse me, Mr. Slat. You're Eric Slat. Yes, that's right, Deputy Head. I'm David Miller. Your wife is one of my patients. She might have mentioned me. Hmm? Now, actually, where is she? I've, uh, I've got to give her this. Uh, I thought Janet went to Dr. Hunter. Oh, no, no, I'm her dentist. Well, well, I can give her this. What is it? Well, no, perhaps I should do it myself. No, no, it's no problem. What's in here? Oh, just some treatment photographs. 
treatment photographs? She underwent a rather unusual treatment, and she very kindly allowed me to use photographs of her for a lecture I was giving on the subject. I, I take it she didn't tell you anything about this? Hmm. Well, anyway, I promised to return them, and I thought as I was coming along tonight, I'd drop them off in person. Better than posting them, obviously. They're, they're not the sort of thing you'd want falling into the wrong hand. Wrong hands. <laughs> well, naturally, they're a little sensitive. Sensitive, sort of embarrassing. Well, yes. And they're sort of funny faces, wide open mouth, <laughs> lots of gums, that sort of thing. Well, kind of. Mm -hmm. But they're very close shots. I mean, you couldn't really recognize. Perhaps I'd better give them straight to your wife. No, no, no. I'll take very good care of them. Right, yes. Now, you two, could you take Mr. Miller to the staff room, please? Um, maybe. No, I... on you go now. Tea and biscuits. <laughs> oh, hello, darling. How are you? What are you so happy about? Oh, just, you know, marriage in general. <laughs> Mr. Cockfoster, are you all right? Oh, he's fine. Mr. Cockfoster, could you just, um... Pop into my office and wait for me there. You up to something? Up to something, dear? No, don't think so. Uh, excuse me, just one second. Photographs of my wife in there. Pick the funniest, make as many photocopies as you can. <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll pin them up round the school. Just for a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll show who's got a sense of humour. Uh, but uh, look, just pick the funniest and get on with it, will you? Oh. And if she's not really recognisable, could you put her name on? <laughs> Just in case. Oh, you don't look very happy, dear. Bit, uh, down in the mouth. I'm sorry? Perhaps you're just feeling a little long in the tooth. <laughs> what are you drivelling about? Oh, I'm just trying to look on the funny side, dear. Uh, just having a bit of a joke. A joke? Well, you make fun of me, I make fun of you. That's marriage. <laughs> Mr. Slatt, are you absolutely sure about this? Yes, yes, just continue with your appointed task. But I uh, thank you. What's going on, Eric? Well, some of the parents have arrived already, so we should be getting started quite shortly. Very exciting. Has um, anyone been looking for me? Looking for you, dear? Oh. Oh, you mean your dentist? My dentist? Yeah, Mr. Miller, he's in the staff room. Uh, he's not my dentist. No, well, he said he was, but who am I to argue? Oh, well, there must have been some children listening. He was sparing my blushes. He's very sweet like that. Sparing your blushes? Why would he be doing that? He's my gynecologist. <laughs> He uh, said something about um, about photographs. Oh, photographs. Uh, oh, he wasn't meant to tell you about that. Why you? Why um? Can we talk somewhere else? Oh, why? Why would you? Office. No. What's wrong? Let's talk out here. It's nicer. Very. Uh, what do you mean, photographs? Well, he asked me. I mean, someone has to do it. Does it really matter? They're just medical photographs. It's not as if they're pornography or anything. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly recognisable. I mean, they haven't got my name on. <laughs> anyway, nobody here is ever going to see them. <laughs> no one will ever know it's me. They're close-ups. <laughs> oh, Eric, do I disgust you so much? Oh, no. No. It, it's just that I asked Mr. Cockfoster to... Yes, yes, you disgust me. I, well, I mean, no. Oh, I mean, I, I... Um... I, um... Um... I think I chose the funniest. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I didn't realise. By the way, Mr. Slat. I want you to know I did not consider that to be part of my duties as a religious education teacher. Mr. Cockfoster, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, Mr. Slat. Mr. Cockfoster seems terribly upset. Why, what did he say? What did he tell you? Well, he was just sort of muttering.
watering, really, but apparently Beaver's been shot. <laughs> Go away. But what about that poor little Beaver? We're sending for a specialist. Now, would you a just... Doctor? Yes, yes, whatever. Oh, Mr. Slatter, those are the welcome leaflets for the parents. <laughs> no! Mr. Slat, I always do the welcome leaflets. Go away, go away, go away! <laughs> oh. <sighs> Malcolm, how nice to see you back at Gulfest High. I was uh, just talking to your sister this morning. Yeah, I heard. And now? We're going upstairs. No, no, the photocopier. Never you mind about that. Look, please, I do not have time to go upstairs. Don't worry, sir. You won't be up there for long. <laughs> you don't understand. I have to get something from the photocopier. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Slatter. Don't worry. No, wait. You don't talk to a nice friend. No. Excuse me. Uh, are you a member of staff here? Oh, yes, indeed. Amanda Triplett, Music and Guidance. Well, I'm Dr. Miller, and I was just wondering... Oh, you must be the beaver doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering how the kids have been treating you recently. What? Has there been anything different about them? Well, yes, now that you mention it, yes, actually. Tell me all about it, Jason, from the start. Well, the other day, totally out of the blue... What? Every girl in my class wrote me a love letter. <laughs> what? what? And the boys, suddenly it's as if they're all hero-worshipping me. Hero-worshipping? <laughs> they even asked if they could come and study with me after school. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I, I tried to put them off. I told them they'd have to make lots of sacrifices. <laughs> and, do, you know, do you know, suddenly they were keener than ever. Oh, God! Maybe not, actually. They said they'd draw lots. Jason, you better know. Dan has told the kids you're Satan. Uh, Satan? The devil, yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes. What? Satan. Me, Satan, yes, that explains everything. Jason! Padlock. Bungee rope. <laughs> you! <laughs> Padlock. I thought we supposed to go at first. I'm improving his chances, love. You see, I'm not too sure of the height of this building. <laughs> now, look, this is all terribly amusing. But this situation could be extremely embarrassing for a senior management executive such as myself. So if you wouldn't mind releasing me immediately, I have a minor crisis to attend to downstairs. You want the keys then? Thank you, yes. <laughs> Take the fast track. No, no, wait. No, no, listen! For the last time, I do not do on-the-spot inspections of that kind. But if you could at least take a look at it. Madam, please. He's been shot! Shot! Excuse me. Jason! Get away from me. You don't understand. Understand what? I am unclean. I am consumed with demonic lusts. Let me help. What are you talking about? Mr. Slat showed me some photographs of his wife, but I was so consumed with unclean lust that all that I could see in place of her face was... What? What could you see? What happens to you too? <laughs> what happens? Don't look at me, Susie. You could be next. Too late. Mr. <laughs> 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 are you all right? Oh, I think you gave him a bit of a fright with your appearance. <laughs> I was going to say there are quite a lot of parents out there now, so don't you think it's time we all got started? It's the talking that's the scariest thing of all. Has anyone seen Eric? I'm here, dear. Hello. <laughs> Listen, uh, why don't you all go into the staff room, have a chat, get started? I just have to pop into my office and deal with some rather urgent work on the copier. Are you all right? Fine, dear. 
absolutely fine. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. What are you doing? Well, I just thought for a moment that maybe I'd go back along the corridor, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There I go again. Just a bit sort of indecisive. <laughs> and obviously I'm quite drawn to going back along the corridor, but I really do feel I ought to be here just... At the moment. Oh, Eric, do you really think you're fooling anyone? Do you think I don't know what you're doing? Ah. Right. <laughs> Fair enough, it's all terribly embarrassing, but this former pupil somehow managed to get me stuck. You just yeah. can't bear to be anywhere near me. No, that, that's not it at all. Ah! <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to be near you. I'm, I'm coming to be near you now. I... Just... coming... down... the stairs. Oh, the man is unhinged. I don't believe this. I just don't believe it. Oh, for goodness sake, I'm attached to a bungee rope! I'm attached to a bungee rope, you stupid... woman! <laughs> Couldn't you at least think of something credible? Oh, listen! Do you really find me so unattractive? I don't find you unattractive at all! <laughs> <laughs> ah, excellent. Here we all are, then. I blame you, Mr. Slat. Without you, I would never have discovered the terrible truth about myself. What? The terrible truth that these photographs have revealed to me. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Get off me! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, I regret to inform you that it has recently come to my attention that I am, in fact, Satan. <laughs> I hope this will not cause too much tension between myself and other members of the religious education department. <laughs> Ah, oh, Mrs. Slat, I was just leaving you a note. The hospital just phoned, and apparently your husband should be back with us by Friday. Just a few cuts and bruises, that's all. So, did we ever find out what was on those photocopies he wouldn't let go of, even when he was unconscious? Well, <laughs> yes, yes, I did. So what was on them? Suffice it to say, Mrs. Slat, your husband must love you very much. <laughs> Stay with BBC One for a movie premiere. Will Mick Nolte succumb to temptation to make his team successful again? Blue Chips is next. <laughs>